I was in court this morning, my friends. Uh, the trial of Khura Mawan versus Ezra Levant, a case of lawfare, of censorship, of a slap suit. That stands for strategic litigation against public participation. It, it met in the Toronto Superior Court this morning at 10 a.m., but the trial did not proceed. The trial was meant to be a week long, but it fell on the short Thanksgiving week to begin with, and unfortunately the judge herself was ill for the last two days, so that left us crunched for time. We just couldn't do it. So by consent, both sides' lawyers agreed to reschedule the whole thing for the week of January 6th, 2014. We're all going to be back in court for a full week then, probably before a different judge in three months' time. This particular delay, delay was no one's fault, but it is starting to become rather ridiculous. The whole matter started in June of 2008. That's when I wrote the words that are the subject of the trial, 2008, and we'll have the trial in 2014. It's hilarious and sad in a way. Clearly, the plaintiff's life has not been altered in any way. He claims no financial damages. He works in a law firm in Regina now. There is no reasonable motivation for him to pursue this into its second half decade now, other than as a political punishment. Just like he pursued Mark Stein in the BC Human Rights Tribunal back in 2008 as a political punishment, this, isn't just, this is not just my theory. As I told you on Tuesday, Awan himself admitted to a reporter years ago that after he lost his human rights complaint against Stein, well, here, here's what he said, quote, it could just as easily ruled in our favor. Nevertheless, we do not plan to appeal the decision because we attained our strategic objective to increase the cost of publishing anti-Islamic material, unquote. That was Khurram Awan's objective. Not justice, not freedom, not fairness. The opposite, actually, an abusive process, deliberately using the court procedures as a penalty to inflict costs on people who have a different political or religious view than he has. Awan boasted that he thought he had forced McLean's to spend $500,000 on the BC case. He's probably right. He's trying to do the same thing to me now. That's the only possible explanation I can think of for a successful lawyer like him from miles away in Regina to come to court in Toronto for a five-day trial for something I wrote on a blog back in 2008 that he himself admits hasn't cost him a dollar in financial damages. He's prosecuting the soft jihad of lawfare against me, or as he called it, his strategic objective. I don't think he'll cost me half a million dollars. McLean's had three lawyers in court. I'll just have one. McLean's had to fly everybody out to Vancouver. I live in Toronto now. That's where the trial will be held. But it's not inconceivable that a one will make me spend between fifty dollars and $100,000 fighting him. And I'll probably never get those costs back, even if I win. So that's my update. I wanted to keep you posted since you've been so supportive of me. Thousands of you have visited my new website, Stand with Ezra. .ca, and you've written me beautiful messages of support, or even taken a photo of yourself holding a sign for freedom of speech. I love those photos, selfies as they're called. And many of you have been generous with me too, chipping into my legal defense fund to help me cover my bills. I will always be grateful to you for that. And in return, I promise you, as I promise you every night on this show, in return for your support, I promise to keep fighting for freedom, not just for myself, but for all of us. God bless Canada, the true north, still strong and still free.